Welcome to Reanimator Reviews. I'm Ryan, and this is The Groom, and we just watched Doctor Sleep, which I purchased or rented through Amazon Prime Video. I think I rented it. We don't own this. I should have bought it in hindsight, but it is the long-anticipated follow-up to The Shining, and uh, I read most of Doctor Sleep. Um, when I initially bought the book, it was before my eye surgeries and before things started to get really bad. So I didn't get to finish it, unfortunately, but uh, I should probably get the audiobook, see how that compared. There are a lot of similarities between the book and the movie, which is nice. However, they did leave out, you know, big chunks of things that I thought would be relative to everything that's going on currently, uh, especially pertaining to vaccines and communicable diseases and how those could be prevented very easily if you just vaccinate your kids. PSA, just vaccinate your kids and wash your hands, please, for the love of God. So, the movie starts out with Dan, who uh, is Danny Torrance from The Shining, spoiler the alert, the little boy, and kind of follows uh, some of his journey after they left the Overlook with his mom and maybe the things that followed him from the Overlook and how he then learned to deal with them with uh, the help of one of our favorite cooks. And uh, we get to see him progress into an adult who's having a really hard time with substance abuse issues. He is an alcoholic, as his dad was, and uh, kind of relocates himself to deal with these things in a more private manner, gets a lot of help from one of the town folk, Billy, who finds him a place to stay, finds him a job, essentially, and is his mentor in AA, which is really nice to see. He calls him, at one point, his best friend, which yeah. is so fulfilling. It's so cute. Um, so, the, the baddies in Doctor Sleep are essentially psychic vampires, I suppose, they don't necessarily bite people, but they do harvest their steam, which is like their their as the essence of their shine. Because we find out there's a lot more people that possess the shine that Danny had uh, grown into in his childhood, and these uh, roving, horrible vampires are finding small children who shine and essentially stealing it from them to keep themselves alive. Their little nefarious group is called The Knot, and I kind of hate all of them. I thought it was a strange decision. The way that Rose the Hat is described in the book is not appealing. I think she has, like, one tooth. And the woman that they got to play, Rose the Hat, is very beautiful. So I could see, you know, children being more apt to follow a very beautiful woman into a, a you know relatively vacant part of the woods mm -hmm. or say um a refining plant and uh kind of listen to what she's saying because they're like oh she's pretty that's fine we'll follow her but one of the children that has the shine ends up contacting dan and they build a relationship this way because she's also picking up on the fact that there's a roving group that are killing children which she's a child and that's you know something she's worried about so, yeah, so she's looking for help any way she can. So she and Dan connect that way. And they have to figure out a way to uh, dismantle the knot and get to Rose the Hat and defeat her before she gets Abra, the girl that contacted Dan. And it's, um, this was a very long movie. I think we had to stop it once just because I needed a break and like, a drink. Like every movie. I like every movie. But, uh... I think it, it was worth the watch, and I'm glad we did watch it. And I feel like I I had recently rewatched The Shining, and you hadn't seen it in a number of years. And you long said, time. even though you hadn't seen it in a long time, watching this movie had had so many callbacks to The Shining that you weren't like, wait, what are they referencing? Yeah, what the I, heck? I was like, oh, oh, like a bunch of times. So. Yeah. That's the other great thing about this movie is that you really don't need 
to actually see The Shining to appreciate how good of a movie this is. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get all the callbacks to The Shining. You're not going to get, you know, who the twins are and yada, yada, yada. You're not going to get all that reference. But even without even seeing The Shining, this movie alone stands true as a good movie, even without it being a sequel to The Shining. So what did you like about the movie? I liked... um... That there were a lot of things, like I said, that were true to the book. Um, I thought that they, the atmospheres they created were beautiful. I loved that they kept the cat because the cat was kind of like, cats, cats are always represented as supernatural beings. And when Dan's working in the hospice, the cat would uh, go visit the rooms of the patients that were soon going to no longer be on this plane of existence. And Dan would go in and use his shine to comfort them psychically or just, Mm -hmm. you know, sit there and talk to them. And I've always, like, really wanted to work in hospice because I would like to be there to comfort people in their final moments and just let them know, you know, it's okay. And it was great to see that hospice care was represented so positively in a movie Mm -hmm. where, you know, in reality, it's, it's not always so gentle and easy and people just let go i think maybe that too could be part of his shine that he takes pain away from them possibly because i know at least from what i've dealt with with hospice calling my office you know asking the doctors for comfort kits there is a lot of morphine in them and dying is not painless all the time so I i thought it was nice you know that this movie has some sort of aspect of Death really isn't that scary. It doesn't have to be scary. You can go into it gently. I love cats, obviously. So it was nice that they kept the cat aspect in there. I thought uh, the girl that played Abra did an amazing job. I, I, I am so critical of child actors because they can come off really bratty and annoying a lot of the time. And I thought she did a phenomenal job. I was really, you know... I was really excited how well she did because that would have taken me completely out of the movie. Just like, ugh, get 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 over with her scenes. I don't want to see her anymore. But she was great. I, I really really dug her acting. Thought she was wonderful. I um, I don't know if this is a like or a dislike, <laughs> but um, in the original, the in the Stanley Kubrick Shining, I should say, um, the the shower boobs lady freaks me out. To no end, to the point where, like, the first time I saw The Shining, I was, like, in my bathroom, like, peeking behind the shower curtain, like, you're not going to get me. Mm-mm. No way. But, like, she, she would kill me, but whatever. And she had so many scenes in this movie. I was just like, oh, it's old shower boobs. What's up? How you doing, girl? Like, still creepy. Still really creeps me out. Mm-hmm. The one part where we had to pause in the movie, because, of course, I had to go to the bathroom. I'm in there just, like, peeking behind the shower curtain, like, nah, you're an adult. Stop it. You're an adult. You stop that. And I'm like, shower boobs, you in there? What's up? No. So I don't know if that's a like or a dislike because that that did freak me out. And that's like the point of the movie. Also, uh, the one that one jump scare that really got us is there was this whole uh, storyline with Dan hooking up with this girl who's a junkie and he's not sure if she OD'd or not she vomited in her sleep and she's laying there and he just kind of like he's trying to peace out and like take money out of her purse and out of nowhere her child comes out and it's just like mommy mommy and in the book like the the kid found like a bag of drugs or something and was like oh canny so there's a, a scene where you're not quite sure if he's just having like an anxiety stress nightmare but she's totally there and she's like, they, they still haven't found us. And I was just like, oh, my soul. My soul is breaking. Oh. And both of us jumped, and I'm pretty sure I screamed. Mm-hmm. So I, I feel as though I've talked enough about my likes. What did you like about this movie? <clears throat> um, my favorite part was Ewan McGregor is a phenomenal actor. And I don't think they could have picked a better actor for this. He played the layers that he gave that character was amazing. Mm-hmm. And he played it so well, and it just, he really made the movie for me. He was, he did such a phenomenal job with this. I didn't read the book. I won't read the book. We all, we all know that. <laughs> but, um, so, 
I don't know anything about how the character is in the in the in the in the book or anything, but in this movie, he is literally what makes this movie so good. Because when you have a movie like this, where it centricates around one person, and it does, everything has to do with Danny. Everything has to do with him, and it all comes back to him. And he's probably he's the character in the book or in the movie the most. So you have to have a good, strong actor if you're going to centricate a movie around one char- character, and they did a phenomenal job with him. So that was my favorite part, is I enjoyed his acting. I really enjoyed all the acting. Like you said, the, ch- the child actor that did Abra was very, very good. The actors that played the members of The Knot were really good. The actor and actress that played Abra's parents were really believable what normal people would react to Mm -hmm. starting to find Abra's gifts. And, you know, there's other scenes in the movie where Danny shows up with Abra and this, that's exactly how any dad would react when their teenage daughter has like a 30 year old man there, you know? Yeah. So, you know, it was, you know, it was also that, but like the real realism too of this movie, the one part where Abra comes to meet Danny and Dan's like, uh, yeah, yeah. A 13 year old girl coming to meet a grown man. No, no, people are going to talk. And it was like, you know, it was like, I really enjoyed that re- realism of, like, you know, the basic nature of stuff. Like, you know, there's still life going on. There's still the world going on. There's still normal stuff you have to worry about. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, that was, but the acting, you and McGregor was just so phenomenal. It's what kept me in this movie the whole time. So what did you not like other than getting scared by Shower Boob Lady? Shower Boob Lady haunts my dreams. Um... So, like, obviously they end up back at the Overlook. That's not a spoiler because it was in the trailer and everything. I felt like, for the most part, they did a really good job trying to uh, fabricate the faces of some familiar folks from the Overlook onto probably other actors. How they Mm -hmm. do that thing where they find someone that looks similar. Deep fake. But doesn't... Yeah, it's a deep fake. You know what I mean. They should have had Jim Carrey. Ugh. Um... For me, like, the, with the twins, I it, it irked me a little bit that they looked kind of artificial. And for me to notice something like that with my level of visual impairment leads me to believe that it might have looked worse to, like, an, a sighted person. I think it was lazy that, you did, that they just didn't use actual twins. Find two mm-hmm. brunettes that are twins and just, I'd rather have them not look exactly like them, but still look identical to each other yeah but it looks like they literally took they found two brunettes that were like similar body structure and then just superimposed a face on them which made them look different because they had different facial structures yeah it just like that that was a definite miss for me i was like oh they don't even look alike i thought with um how they described in the book this is a complete nitpick but um, the reason why the knot are dying in the book is because one of them contracts measles because apparently no one got MMR in the knot as a child. They're <laughs> vampires, whatever. So um, when they're they're cycling and they're going through, you know, they're pretty much dying. And it would be like different systems in their bodies would stand out like they'd look transparent and then you could just see all their bones and you could see all their musculature. Then it was just their nervous system. And then it was, you know, like just their nervous system and their eyes and like blood vessels. And I thought that was really cool. And I feel like they touched upon it a little bit, but not, I was looking for more. I was, you know, really excited to see what they could do with visual effects with that kind of thing to pull it off. It would have been probably either really, really cool or really hokey um, for the one character in the knot, I think they did it pretty well, mm-hmm. you know. But um, I really wish they would have kept that that they're dying from measles in the movie because it would be so relevant today, especially mm-hmm. with current events and how um, passionate people are about vaccination or not vaccination, you know, with their children and with themselves, with you know, flu epidemics and everything. I thought that would have been. What's the movie with Kevin Bacon? The Invisible? There's a lot of... The Hollow Man? The Hollow Man. Do you remember how he first went invisible? 
No. Remember how hokey that was, where it showed like parts, and then he just went completely invisible. Well, I mean, like that was. That's in... probably what they would have done. That was like the two thousands, <laughs> though. That was. No, no they like could have the done that, 2000s. and that would have been better. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? That was twenty years ago, and they could have done that. Yeah. Like, they they could have, but that was a big swing. Also, in this. like, I liked Hollow Man. <laughs> I thought it was a, an interesting take on like Isn't the Invisible Elizabeth Man Shue story. In that? That's the Invisible Man. No, wait, that's Elizabeth Moss. Who the hell's Elizabeth Sh- Wait, no, she's... Maybe. Elizabeth Anyways, Shue? this is so far off Adventures topic. in Babysitting? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. We should watch The Hollow Man. Back to topic. So, um, I thought that there were aspects that they could have kept in that would have been, you know, socially relevant now. Um, I was a little disappointed that Dr. John's character wasn't really in this other than, like, three seconds in the AA meeting where he's like, Hey, man... I know you lost your watch. It was when you were washing your hands because you were following uh, standard precautions and took your watch off and proceeded to do your sterile hand washing properly. So good job. Jesus. Hi. Welcome to our PSA about vaccinations and washing Please wash your hands. your hands. Please wash your goddamn hands. Uh, Just wash your hands. All right. So I'll tell you things I did and like, and the first one is a very nit, nit, a very nitpicky thing. Nitpick away. They portrayed the knot as Romani gypsies, and it was incredibly offensive to anybody who has any type of Romani heritage. It was, they hit every stereotype. It was, it, every stereotype they hit. The Romanians were the original, were original vampires, so sucking the essence out of people. Kidnapping children, because apparently Romani gypsies do that. You know, being pickpockets and thieves, and oh, it it was like the way they were portrayed was literally the stereotypical Romani gypsy, right down to like all the accessories, like the way they dressed and stuff like that. I was like, wow, somebody hates Romanian people. Stephen King. Stephen King. No, that's a speculation. That's yeah. not true. So you know, like like that was just like that was kind of one of those things. I was like, eh. I was like, I was not really. I was like, eh, I don't really, when I don't really like that. When it plays to that stereotype, I know you get really upset. Oh, I just hate, I just, it's, it's lazy. It's lazy. It's not that I find it offensive being part of the, having Rom, Romanian blood. It's not that I find it offensive because I'm not a gypsy. None of my family are yada, yada, yada. So I don't really care about that, you know. But it's just, it's, to me, it's just lazy. When you do, when you write or produce stuff like that. It's just lazy. It's you could have done it so much, so much better. And it's just I just ah uh, just hated that. The other thing, the thing I hated the most, I hate how easy the member of the knots died. You didn't need to do anything special. These were supposed to be like supernatural beings that suck your essence, steam, shine, whatever you want to call it, out of you. And can live for a very, very long time. She remember, she never says live forever. She says live for a very long time. And eat well. And eat well. Do yes. you think they died so easily because they were so low on steam though? But that but that's a thing. Even when she supercharged, still like it's like it's just bullets. Like not like, oh, we gotta go dip bullets in holy water or something. Do we watch something. a lot of supernatural. Do something <laughs> that's just not, just kill them normally. Just shoot them with rock salt to slow them down. I would have enjoyed that <laughs> very, very much. But yeah, that, that was, that, that was my two nit, nit, my two nitpicky things. And, you know, it just, the, it was just, I was like, it, to me, both of those things seem lazy. It's just like, oh, hey, how do you kill them? I don't know, shoot them. It's fine. <laughs> like, it's just like, they got to the end of the movie. They're going to have to just shoot them. Like, oh, we don't want to do everything else. But uh, the way the way they died though was uh, cool though the static kind of like thing that they yeah. did. I just I wish really they would have done more with it. Oh. oh, another nitpicky thing. I felt like in the this is going back to the book thing. My interpretation, at least, of Rose the Hat was that she was a, a much stronger personality than how the actress played her in the movie, and I felt like the way that the crow was talking to her. Is he the crow, or is he just crow? Crow, crow daddy. Crow daddy. The crow. Yeah, Brit, The way Brit Eric Brit. Draven was talking to her, I feel like the uh, Rose the Hat in the book would have, like, slapped his face off his body or, like, punched his 
teeth into the back of his head because she just like she didn't seem like she would take that kind of back talk but i don't know it's my opinion anyways all right so what would you rate it I would probably give this a three out of five. I really enjoyed watching it. I really need to finish the book. Someone read it to me, please. You won't read it to me. But um, I'm, I'm kind of bummed I didn't buy it because we could have, you know, watched The Shining and then watched this right after and kind of like... That would be my suggestion it. to people how, on, how, on how to watch this. Watch The Shining and then watch this. Yeah, that would have been cool. But I, I enjoyed it. I probably would watch it again. I hope it comes to Netflix or, you know, mm-hmm. free on free on Prime so we could watch it again. But, mm-hmm. yeah, I had a good time. Would you rate it? Uh, I would definitely give this a four out of five. Like, my only two dislikes were very nitpicky. Other than that, like, the the acting was very strong. It, it was scored very well. Yeah. Uh, it was, ve- like, the, the sound and the music in it was very good, especially when they first saw the Overlook. For the first time, they picked the perfect music for that. I'm not going to spoil it for you. But, um, yeah, so I would definitely give it a, full, a 4 out of 5. This definitely has a lot of rewatch value, so it's definitely worth buying. And this is definitely something, like, you could watch it like we did, then go back and watch The Shining and watch this again. And I think you're going to find stuff in it every time you watch it that you didn't see it before, which is definitely something that's that you want in a rewatch quality movie. Oh, for sure. So... All right. So those are our thoughts. Have you seen the movie? What did you think? Did you finish the book? Tell me what you thought compared to the movie. But don't spoil the ending for it. Or if you'd like to read the book to me, please let us know down below. If you did like the video, please give us a like. If you check the shower after you watch The Shining every time to make sure old shower boobs isn't hiding in there, please give the video a like. Um... You can hit the notification bell for all further uploads and live stream notifications. Um, leave a comment, like I said. You can find me on Facebook at Reanimator Reviews, Twitter and Instagram at Reanimator. You can find my solo as well as reviews with the groom in podcast form on iTunes. Thank you to the Farsighted Network. Please don't forget to check out all of their awesome creators and content as well. Where can they find you? You can find me on Twitter under repeat groom ray you can also find me on twitch under repeat ray animator where me and my stupid friends play stupid video games and it's a good time all right that about wraps it up yeah long awkward pause long awkward pause not gonna get me this time shower boobs bye (laughs)